Okay, um, I, I threw some uh, images there at the be very beginning, and, uh, well, maybe I'll explain them. <laughs> I suppose I should explain them. Um, this image, or this picture, is um, at, was taken at Mar-a-Lago, gosh, Mar-a-Lago, which is uh, Trump's uh, grand uh, club slash mansion in Florida. And that's Melania before the uh, facelift. <laughs> uh, and there's Jeffrey Epstein. And then his girlfriend, um, it's Jessaline, I'm not sure to pronounce it, her first name, Je Jessaline Maxwell. And um, in case you were living under a rock or something, um, uh, this fellow Epstein was in jail on. I don't know, 40 counts of rape or tra trafficking or sexual abuse, I don't know. So he was in jail, and um, he, um, well, he's dead. <laughs> There's a debate now. This is this is uh, making America great. <laughs> We're going to spend the next month trying to figure out how Epstein uh, died. Whether he committed suicide, whether someone was murdered, and whether he was murdered in prison. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're going to burn, I don't know, the media's going to burn up two months, or whatever. There's going to be an investigation, of course. Uh, the Attorney General's going to investigate, the Republicans are going to investigate, the Democrats are going to investigate, and uh, uh, the other yeah, this this scandal, now that Epstein's dead, that doesn't resolve there are other people implicated, both the, this woman, Maxwell, on the very right, um, she was um, a uh, co-conspirator, uh, getting girls, underage girls, to um, Epstein and other men. Um... And uh, oh, and the, I almost forgot the the other big huge scandal is who engineered he'd, Epstein was charged with um, rape, human trafficking, all this stuff in two thousand and five or six, and he was given an extraordinarily light sentence, one year in jail, where he could leave during the day for the whole day, and. Um, it was called a non-prosecution agreement, and that was arranged and approved by none other than the former Secretary of Labor, Alex Acosta. So somebody pulled a bunch of strings to get this phony slap on the wrist. He could have been, 
Epstein could have been put away for at least 20 years, maybe 30 or 40, considering how many counts. I mean, he had at least 20 girls, probably 40 girls, that were going to testify that were as victims. So, but they gave him a one-year sentence, jail sentence, where he could come and go as he pleased, practically. I mean, it's just outrageous. And Alex Acosta um, was the d district attorney in Florida that approved of it, wrote it up, and approved of it. So there is a corruption. The the let's see, is it the Southern District of New York is looking into this? I think the Southern District of New York uh, uh, attorney is looking into this non-prosecution agreement, which looks totally corrupt. But uh, so that was just <laughs> wait, that was just that one picture I had to explain. Okay, better stop. Okay, I have to explain this uh, horribly disgusting picture. Sick. It's sick. Let me, let me just be totally frank, right up front. Sick in every way, practically sick. This is a picture of Donald Trump in El Paso, Texas, um, just after a gunman who was a supporter of Donald Trump and a, probably a white supremacist, probably didn't like Mexicans because Mexicans were coming into El Paso, crossing the border in El Paso, and he was gonna came down, he came down, drove eight hours to shoot up a Walmart in El Paso, Texas, and kill as many Mexicans as he could. Because Donald Trump has said, Mexicans, they're murderers, they're rapists, they're drug dealers. We don't want them. You know, it's just, you know, racist stuff like that. Hey, thanks, WBCK. Big thanks goes out to WBCK. Big thanks goes out to Rank. Big, big thanks to go out, who goes out to Rank for pushing this racist, anti-immigrant baloney. By the way, my, my ancestors are uh, immigrants. And they didn't speak English, and they didn't have any skills, and they didn't have any money, and they weren't going to get over, and they didn't have, they didn't have a visa. <laughs> so, nope, they just came over on the boat. Right, Rank? Your, your people did, too. They didn't speak English, and they came over on the boat. Whatever. Okay, back to the picture. <laughs> um, so this is a photo op. This is what they call a big, fat photo op. And Trump went down, this was last week, after 22, is it 22 people were killed? And I don't know how many were wounded. And um, he went down to quote unquote comfort people, I suppose. I don't know. Trump doesn't know how to comfort people. <laughs> it's not It's not in his emotional vocabulary. It, he lacks that, that word, that, that feeling. Um, it's called empathy. <laughs> He doesn't, he doesn't have it. Um, so he goes down there, 
And all he cares about is the big photo op because that's all he cares about. He doesn't care about people. He doesn't care about the violence. He doesn't care about... <laughs> he just wants the big photo op with his big fat face on the photo op. And um, so this was hard to arrange. This was because the people in El Paso, first of all, they didn't even want Trump down there. They didn't want Trump down there. And then the people in the hospital who had been shot, God, I, this is just a horrible story to have to tell. The people that had been shot who were being treated in the hospital they wanted nothing to do with Trump. And that's how much people dislike Trump. It's not just me. It's not just me. The people in El Paso, all the people that were hospitalized for, in that shooting, not one wanted to be visited by Trump. And boy, I can't blame them. And so you don't see any pictures of Trump going into a room in, a, in that hospital and you know, someone in a bed being treated. You, you, you don't see any of that. You see him in the hall, talking to nurses, talking to doctors. Um, and so what they did was, here's how desperate they were to get a good photo op. The, the child there is an orphan. Is, it, is an orphan that his, the parents were killed in the um, shooting. So the hospital, and the hospital is just as sick as Trump is because they, they facilitated this photo op. Um, they said, oh, I know, we'll bring in the baby. And you'll do a photo op with the baby. The baby wasn't even in the hospital. The baby had was released two days ago, three days ago, before this was even. And so they brought the baby into the hospital. And you can see the backdrop of this. This is just an advertisement. This is, an, this is basically an advertisement for Donald Trump and an advertisement for the hospital. You can see in the background of the screen, it says, what does it say? University Medical Center, something El Paso. So everyone's, everyone's advertising. And I don't know. Nothing, the guns are still floating around, people are still being, uh, you know, this just this week, I think it was two uh, young men again uh, were caught with weapons around Walmarts. I think there were two uh, uh, attempted incidents where a person had, was armed, they didn't, st they didn't shoot anybody, but they were stopped and detained or whatever. And um, so we had two close calls after this. So nothing's going to be solved. I know it, uh, shoot, the mass shootings will continue. Is there anything else to say about that picture? Um, there were, I don't know how many, there were a lot of editorials saying the same thing. This is really sick. And they used the baby for this photo op. And I don't know who's going to take care of the baby now. Well, I better stop. Uh, let me say one more thing about that uh, shooting in El Paso. Um, 22 people died. Um, uh, we now have, not only do we have a gun violence problem in the United States, um, we also have a, um, a white supremacist, violent white supremacist uh, problem. And there were th three shooting, three mass shootings just in the period of what a, w a week and a half. Um, and um, <laughs> the the one the, the one in El Paso we, 
was surely a white supremacist. The, the shooting in um, California at that garlic festival, I call it garlic, I'm, I thought the city, it, it's not, the city is not garlic, but it was a garlic festival. That may have been I, uh, a white supremacist action. Um, oh, another thing is they took down one of the white supremacist website for uh, 8chan on the internet because, in other words, they're organizing on the internet these angry white males. Angry white males. So thank you, Donald Trump. By the way, let me just make it clear. Yeah, Donald Trump, you are an a, an accessory or <laughs> an accessory to to mass murder or mass shootings. I mean, not mass murder, mass shootings. Yeah, you're an accessory. Whenever you use the rhetoric that uh, the Mexicans are they rapists, they're drug dealers, they're murderers. They murder people. They murder white people, especially. <laughs> yeah, you're you're talking to your white supremacist base. <laughs> it's 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 disgusting and sick. That's the only way I can put it. And um, so, yep, yeah, you are uh, blood on your hands. And there's a radio station too that's got a little bit of blood. Oh, better stop. Let me give you a preview of the, the, the end of this uh, video. Um, I'm going to talk about four articles, um, recent articles. One is the article comparing uh, Donald Trump to George Wallace and the similarities and differences. And actually, the difference, be the difference between Trump and Wallace is very disturbingly bad. Uh, and I'll explain that later. Uh, there's another one. Let's see. There's the one on Wallace. There's the one on cruelty. Tr cruelty is the policy. I think uh, cruelty is the point. And that's an Atlantic article. And then what else do I have? Oh, I have the USA Today article on the number of incidents of violence. Um, if you want violence and you want um, a lot of tension and um, strife, Donald Trump's your guy. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe the Russians are really happy with Donald Trump. By the way, I'm going to, another preview is I'm going to make, I'm going to, I'm going to talk at least a half an hour about Russia, Trump, the Trump-Russia connections. They are very deep, um, despite what no collusion, no collusion, no collusion. Can I keep saying that, Donald? <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't believe you. No. So, oh, let me go to this meme. Um, yeah, this has always been, yeah, a real struggle. I, I don't understand. It's a struggle for me to understand. Um, why, why would, Don, how would Donald Trump have any clue as to what, the average person has to deal with. I mean, he's never li he never lived a quote unquote regular normal life. His father was rich. Uh, I th I think even when uh, yeah when Donald Trump was young, his his father had was very wealthy. So um, and then his father just kept getting wealthier. And as Donald Trump be, uh, got older, he started to inherit. He was inheriting money. Money was being passed illegally, by the way, avoiding taxes and you know tax cheating from the father to the son. They had a chauffeur. They had a maid. They had a cook. Blah 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 blah. So how would Donald Trump know? Possibly know what 
what is what's going on in Michigan or what's going on with the regular family or um, a person middle class or even lower middle class or or even or, or worse you know on food stamps or whatever out of a job how would he possibly know he doesn't so this meme here wait I've got to adjust it this meme uh, explains it and hold on I've got to pause and recalculate here or recalibrate okay so here's the meme um, I voted for Trump because Hillary has no idea of the struggles we face as as average Joe blue-collar workers in small-town USA and um, so and then the bottom half of the meme um, has the gold-plated <laughs> New York City East Coast yeah, East Coast uh, elite um, apartment whether well, this is in the Trump Tower apartment and um, I think this photograph was taken for um, I don't know one of these magazines to show how rich Donald is because he's obsessed with being rich um, so <laughs> that's wife number three and kid number that, let's see five five I think yeah three by the first wife one by the second wife and one by Melania and uh, yes and of course Melania is imported <laughs> she's an imported product of Slovenia by the way I have to um, yeah, how many of you um, out there <laughs> in Calhoun County, Battle Creek, yeah, are in your third marriage and your fifth child and your wife is 25, 20 years younger than you and she doesn't speak English that well <laughs> and she's from Eastern Europe? Wow, yeah. He, Donald understands your your life. Oh, and look at that's that's Baron. Baron is riding a big, big. What is it that a big lion? And there, see, everything's gold plated. I'm sure your house is gold plated just like that. So Donald understands all of your problems. And then Melania, I'm sure, is in a very expensive gown, which I'm sure all the women in uh, <laughs> Calhoun County have a gown like that. Yep. So, um, yeah, Donald's always been... Do, Donald was born rich. He was born rich, and then when he became an adult, he was a millionaire by 18. He's never worked for any other, any other person except his father. And then he inherited the business. How many... Yeah, how many people have in Battle Creek or Calhoun County has managed that? No. Hardly, probably hardly anybody. But you voted for him, or some of you voted for him. So there we go. Um, all right, that's th that's enough for that rant.
Okay, the last part or the second half of this video, um, I'm gonna, this is going to be a just a little teaser. <laughs> it's a teaser. Um, I'm going to talk about um, four articles, recent articles about the Trump phenomenon. Yeah, this uh, article is in the Atlantic. It's the, the title is the cruelty is the point which is the the policy of Donald Trump and it fits right with his personality cruelty it's what he's good at is being cruel and demeaning and derogatory and so he's cruel demeaning derogatory toward well in this case the target is immigrants uh, the other article is, um, well, there are four total, and the, this one is um, uh, conservatives have a white nationalist problem. That's, uh, yeah, white nationalism, um, when you have the KKK uh, endorsing Trump in 2016, and you have um, American Renaissance is another white nationalist group, and then you've got the anti-immigrant groups, and then you've got the Nazis supporting Trump, and then the neo-Nazis, and then the Confederate, well, I don't know, let's stop. Okay, the next article, it, oh, the Trump rhetoric, the violent rhetoric, um, invasion killer, um, and the incidents of violence, now we're getting mass shootings, um, Actually, I'm surprised that there isn't more violence, really. I mean, oh, and then the bomber was just convicted. Um, the what, what, the guy that sent, like, what, 20 bombs out or 15 bombs exactly to the people that uh, Trump had mentioned. That most of the damage. And then this is the most disturbing one, or really sinister and, once again, sick. Sinister, sick, is a comparison between Trump Trump's uh, style of politics, which is hate and anger, and George Wallace's, which was hate and anger. There's a there's a big difference, though, and it turns out that George Wallace wasn't as bad as Trump. <laughs> well, I'm laughing. Sorry, sorry. I, I, I laugh when things are so outrageous. So we're comparing Donald Trump <laughs> with the racist segregationist George Wallace. And George Wallace comes out to be a better person than Donald Trump. You know, the, you people, I'm going to tell you again, you people that voted for the racist guy, racist Donald, and you knew he was racist. From the get-go, you knew he was racist. Because he, he latched on to this stupid birther thing. Now, I don't care who started the birther thing, really. Because it was debunked. Okay, I'm talking about where Obama was born. So if you knew that Donald Trump was peddling this cockamamie, phony, uh, Obama was born in Kenya, baloney BS, and his white people were digging it and eating it up, you knew he was a racist. Hmm. Now, as awful as Hillary Clinton was, you know, and she had bad points. Yep, uh, she wasn't a racist, and she wasn't a a you call it a pathological liar. She wasn't a pathological liar, and she wasn't addicted to Twitter, <laughs> and she wasn't involved in money laundering, and she d wasn't evading taxes. I think Donald is all those. Wait, I'm going in a long rant. So let me repeat once again: for those who voted for Donald Trump. You knew that he was a birther, which was total baloney and lies, and it was just a racist slam on Obama. And you knew from his first speech, he went into the Mexicans, the Mexicans are rapists, are drug dealers, they murder white people. The Mexican people, they're brown, and they murder white people, and you're a white person. You don't want that, do you? This, uh, this racism just is just... Well, okay, I'm stopping.
I've got some good news here. I thought maybe I would switch to uh, um, the bad news to the good news. This is the Electoral College. Um, oh boy, I've got it on slow. Okay, this uh, is just a recent, I think it was what, this week. Um, they did, this is an electoral map projection based on Donald Trump's favorable, uh, unfavorable ratings in each of the states. Okay, it's not national, it's by state. And the Electoral College goes, is determined by state. So each state basically votes on who they want to be president. That determines the Electoral College votes that you get. So, or uh, Electoral College that each candidate gets. So if you look based on the um, favorable ratings in each of the states, hold on. Okay, um, so I was saying the this is a state by state favorable uh, Trump rating, um, and they're projecting this might be what might be what some of the electoral college may turn out to, to be look like. Um, because Trump is becoming unpopular. It's to you, WBCK, to you, Rank, and even to you, Tim Collins. These are quote-unquote statistics and quote-unquote projections. So, yeah, it could be wrong. could be only 80% true or 90% true. Um, but uh, he is un he's getting, Trump is getting unfavorable ratings in Iowa, which he won last time. And that's why it's only, or, oh, that's why it's it's actually leaning Democrat. That's light blue. So, WBCK rank, Tim Collins, light blue Iowa, light blue leaning Democrat, light blue Ohio. That means that Trump, I believe, and I have to double check on the statistics, means that Trump is, quote unquote, underwater. In other words, there are more people that dislike him or give him an unfavorable rating than like him. And this is voters, I'm presuming, but maybe I'm wrong. Voters are just the general Ohio people, Ohio public. Um, and then what are other leaning states, leaning Democrat that Trump won last time? So it would be Texas is now leaning uh, <laughs> Democrat. That's unbelievable. And of course, Utah. You know what? I don't think Utah ever really liked Trump, but they're leaning Democrat. Um, now, and then you will, you will notice the only solid, what, have I already gone over this? Maybe I've already gone over this. The only solid, uh, wow, and Trump is 
likely blue. I mean, Florida is likely blue. That's pretty amazing. And where is Trump doing well? He's doing Trump in the uh, Trump is doing well in the unpopulated states. Um, gosh, I think I've already done this earlier in the video, uh, but I'll re I'm going to repeat it. Oh, okay, I'll have to double check now. So, according to this projection, they have 419 electoral votes. Okay, 278 vo votes are. Uh, solid Democrat, then 55 are likely Democrat, this electoral college votes, and then 86 are um, lean Democrat. So it might be a blowout. Oh, and you need 270 electoral college votes to win. I can go over the electoral college again. Maybe that's a good thing. I can take a break. I don't have to think too hard. I don't want to get too angry. I can just talk about the electoral college because it's confusing. So you have to have a majority of the Electoral College to win the presidency. It's not based on the popular vote, the presidential election. It's based on the Electoral College. And each state, as you can see, those are the, each state has a number. That number is the number of Electoral College votes. The more popular, populous states have larger Electoral, co uh, electoral College numbers. It's a winner-take-all system by state except for, well, Nebraska, and, yeah, see, you can see Nebraska is not a winner-take-all, but almost all the states, and I think Maine is not a winner-take-all state. Um, so that means that uh, if Trump wins, um, well, let's say, I'll give you a third example. If Trump wins Texas by one vote, the entire 38 electoral college votes goes to Trump, and the opponent would not get any electoral college votes. It's called winner-take-all. And um, you need 270 to win. So Trump lost the popular vote um, by 3 million. And that's because New York voted, New York overwhelmingly voted for Hillary Clinton. And California overwhelmingly, the two most populous states, uh, overwhelmingly voted for Hillary Clinton. And um, so even though uh, uh, Hillary Clinton won the popular vote, she lost the Electoral College vote, and um, that quirk happens. And people are talking about changing the Electoral College. Uh, is there anything else I can say about this map? Um, other than it's a complete blowout. <laughs> 119, only 119 uh, Republican Electoral College votes is projected by this. Because Trump's approval rating is like 42, 41, you know, in some states it's, well, in a lot of states it's way, it's way under that. It's probably in the 30s. So, well, okay, that's enough of that. Uh, yeah, let me just mention a couple of things. I don't want to belabor this map because it's, it's, it's almost unbelievably optimistic as far as we who don't like Donald Trump. Um, you look at Florida, which has a lot of Electoral College votes, uh, 29 is it, in Florida. Florida is not just, it's not just leaning Democrat, it's likely Democrat, what we would call likely Democrat. So if he, the race is over. <laughs> yeah, let me, let me emphasize that. If any of this is true, if even half of it is true, Let's say only half of this, these projections are correct, the more risky projection. Let's say, okay, if Michigan and Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, which are listed here as solid blue, if they go Democrat, it's all over. Trump is done. And then, then they'll have to drag him out of the White House. <laughs> Put him in handcuffs. And then and charge him in New York uh, and in the uh, uh, U.S. District Court uh, in um, Maryland and the U.S. District Court in Florida or in Virginia and um, where else? In New York, uh, Maryland, Virginia. I think he's grand jury's going on. He's going to be in trouble. Yeah, he's going to be. He may be arrested. He may be. Hey, another first. He may be the first ex-president to do jail time. <laughs> to do Jail, hard jail time, man. And um, God, how incredible. 
Uh, I'm gonna can't believe I'm saying that. Yeah, when he steps out of the Oval Office of whatever it is, January the 21st or something, it's the inauguration day, the police are going to say, oh, Mr. Trump, <laughs> to write this way. <laughs> Pardon my laughter. I can't believe how horrible Trump is. He's, you people who voted for him, he's a total, complete fraud, an utter failure in business, inherited everything from his father, everything. He inherited cash from his father. His father co-signed loans for large, uh, large buildings and for casinos that went under, that went into the ground. And then, and then he, of course, he inherited the entire, uh, all the properties from his father. So he has never earned anything, really, except uh, 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 of the real estate outside of his father. So um, the. I don't know what what else phony can we say? It's just all of his businesses that he tried failed. Vodka failed. Our air the airlines. Trump Airlines failed. Trump Magazine failed. Trump University fl- crashed and burned, uh, and then was sued. Um, Trump Soho fails. Every pro- and so let's remember remember our saying: everything Trump touches dies. So almost all those casinos are dead. Uh, Trump Soho is dead. Um, the beauty pageants, I don't think they're doing the, the beauty pageants anymore. Those are dead. Um, Trump Vodka is dead. Trump University, Trump Foundation, fraud. Um, you can go on and on. Trump Stakes was a joke, whatever. I mean, so the, the man has a huge tra- have bankruptcies galore. Oh, okay, I better stop. I'm going on a rant. Oh, stop, stop, stop you. Okay, uh, this section is going to be on Trump's uh, racism and his cruelty. It's to you out there. You know who I'm talking about, that radio station, and to the Republican Party in general and the people that voted for Trump. Yeah, you got a cruel racist in the White House, so I'm going to drive that home, that drive that point home. And um, this article... Uh, is in, I was in the New York Times, was it? I think it was in the New York Times, yeah. And um, it compared uh, Donald Trump to another demagogue, racist politician, successful too, in the South anyway, was George Wallace. Now, those who don't know or remember who George Wallace was, um, George Wallace was, was he governor of Alabama? He was a Southern politician. He ran for president in 1968. Um, and this was when the civil rights movement was at its peak and there was violence and um, they were rioting and um, shootings. They were killed. They, there were shootings of civil rights workers, murders of civil rights workers, attacks on the freedom fighter buses that went down to register people in the South. Well, I could, go, I could do a whole half hour, an hour on the civil rights struggles uh, in the South and, well, in cr- across the country for that matter. But George Wallace w- was going to uh, uh, use this white anger, white fear, 
um, to get to try to get elected, and he ran for president. I think he ran for president twice, maybe. 68, I know he ran. He may have tried it four years later. And this article compares Trump's style, or, or George Wallace's style, campaigning style, speech style, to Donald Trump's. They're very similar because they get people angry. He has these people whipped up, gets them all into a big uh, auditorium, and, and he says, in uh, Wallace's case, it was how bad the black people were. But in Trump's case, it's how bad the immigrants, I hate the immigrants, even though we use all this stuff. Most of our food, I would say 50% of our food has been picked or processed by, by immigrants. A lot of them are legal. But hey, if you want to go hungry, <laughs> no, it's just a little sarcasm there. You know sarcasm. Um, so... Um, this one says that as bad as, this is amazing, as bad as Wallace was, they said that Wallace would start out his rallies and they were kind of hate fests. We hate. We hate the pointy intellectual. We hate the experts. We hate the white liberal, or the, the liberal elite in New York. And same, well, was similar story almost. Um, a liberal elite in Washington. And, um, but he would be very general. He wouldn't mention, he wouldn't mention names of people. <laughs> Trump does the, Trump does the worse, worser thing. Trump picks out individuals, names them, and then they get death threats. So, if you want, and this goes out especially to you, rank, and WBCK. If you want to rip the country apart and you want to have more shootings, and who knows, maybe we'll get riots. I don't know. Is that what you're going for? White people rioting or Mexicans rioting? I, I don't, or immigrants rioting? You know, there are already, uh, uh, well, hunger strikes in the detention camps. They're concentration camps, right, Rank? Um, so... If that's what you're shooting for, you're, you're playing with fire, okay? And we've already had how many mass shootings in the past two weeks? Three. There were three mass shootings. There was one in California, one, and that was a uh, right-winger uh, probably. Um, and then there was definitely a right-winger, Trumper, anti-immigration, went out to kill Mexicans in El Paso. And of course, Trump says nothing, doesn't denounce it. Oh, well, I don't care. I'm golfing. <laughs> I'm golfing. I'm tweeting. I'm too busy. Um, so um, he did give that canned press conference, but that was under duress. That, that statement he read off of the teleprompter, he didn't write that. He could, and he barely could read it because Trump can't read very well. Right? Hey, thumbs up for not reading well or at all. Trump hardly reads at all. Um, so if you want violence, you want more mass shootings, you want more white supremacists with, with uh, semi-automatic weapons shooting people, uh, it could be shooting along the border. I don't know. It could be uh, shooting at Walmart at this, uh, for this guy. Um, th then you're successful. You, you, you've, you, you, and, and you've got blood on your hands. Let me just say that to you, Rank, and to Donald Trump and to Stephen Miller, the racist guy who writes Trump's horrible speeches, um, you've got blood on your hands. You're inciting people to violence. And so when Trump names somebody as being, I don't know, an un-American or a criminal or a rapist or I don't know what all, he, you know, he's got all kinds of derogatory names. Uh, what uh, go back yeah go back to your uh, your rat infested uh, country well those people will get death threats right rank and I know you like death threats because your radio station is going toward that if all you talk about is how bad immigrants are and by the way the immigrants are what are they doing they're picking our fruit they're picking our vegetables they're processing our meat that you eat rank <laughs> yeah at Horrocks Who's mining the vegetables there at Horrocks? It ain't white guys like you, Rank. I'm sorry, I'm getting real racist and real sarcastic here, racial. Um, but um, 
So if you want more violence, more division, more shootings, and of course, rank and you, Trump and you aren't going to do a damn thing about mental, mental illness and getting the guns out of the mentally ill because you don't care. Trump definitely doesn't care. And Mitch McConnell, the Senate Majority Leader, doesn't care about stopping the gun violence. They don't care. They live in a gated community. They're filthy. They're wealthy. So why, why would they, you know, you've never been serious about any of this violence. You don't care. I think Trump, because he's cruel, and what was the title of this section? Trump's racism and his cruelty. Trump likes violence. He's violent language, and he says, if I shot somebody on Fifth Avenue, I wouldn't be arrested. Yeah, he's a, he's a demagogue, authoritarian, uh, cruel, per oh, God, he's a horrible, he's despicable, deplorable, disgusting. I don't know how much more I can make that clear. And you're helping him rank. I hope you sleep well at night, rank. And that's to you too, Tim, because you let him go on and you give him three hours. Except, well, I'm getting very personal here. Yeah. So um, when the next mass shooting comes, and we're getting a mass shooting, what, every other week now? Oh, and let me just say, three mass shootings were foiled. In other words, the person was arrested before he, he I, the three cases I read, well, I read was, well, the one person, he had, he had weapons, he had bullets, he was making threats. Um, and they arrested these guys, uh, three of them, and I can't remember where, where all they were, uh, what states. I'll have to, you know what, I can do, I can do a five minute, ten minute segment on the three almost mass shootings. And you've, you've done nothing on mental health because you don't care. You've done nothing on guns because you don't care. Right? Yeah, you guys don't care. The only thing you care about is helping the rich and low, 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 low taxes. That's all you care about. So, um, wow, it's, uh, okay, I went into a long rant. So let's recap. Donald Trump is worse and more dangerous than George Wallace because George, George Wallace would just say, oh, the pointy-head professors were bad or the elites were bad or the Washington bureaucrats were bad and he wouldn't name anybody. Trump, and you did it this morning, didn't you, uh, Rank? You will name Tlaib. You follow. You you are following Trump's lead. Yeah, you're, you so um, you're going to name Tlaib, and de they're getting death threats. Um, and I think I'll mention that too. I mean, yeah, they 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 are all getting death threats. So um, and by the way, I think I'm yeah. So when you name people uh, personally. Uh, on your radio program and Trump names them on your on his Twitter feed they will get death threats because you people are cruel and you have blood on your hands okay so the 22 people that died in El Paso many of them who are Mexican or Mexican heritage um, that's blood on your hands rank and I hope you sleep well
Your voice, your community.